you very much. It's Dr. Della for that awesome introduction. I pray the God, may the God of unity never leave us in Jesus' name. Amen. And I particularly appreciate the staff for being there in pastoral care and, uh, and leadership. Not uh, due to our tight schedule, but we still find time to do the work of God. We God find time to do our own. And I appreciate the student for coming too. I'm quite impressed because they came earlier than yesterday, which means what we said yesterday, they right. hacking to it that we pastoral care students, time is very important for us. Please, I want to start like this. Did anybody have question? Is there any part that you did not understand yesterday? Maybe you went through the, the recording, you did not understand any part, or if you have read, you did not understand any part, or you have any contribution, please, I want us to quickly do that, if there's any, any question. Okay. Thank you very much. If there is no question, I want to quickly just go through what we learned yesterday, that uh, as a student here in pastoral care and leadership training, why are we taught pastoral care as a, a developing consistent pastoral care? Why do we choose it as a course here? It is very important for us because we all, we are leaders. If we are not leaders now, we may become leaders by the grace of God. Some of us may become a pastor, leaders in the church, pastor's wife, depends. Even in the society, with this knowledge you have, we will help you not only in, um, in Christian community, it will help you where you work in other places. And I said yesterday that the aim, why are we teaching it? Because as a leader, we are mobilizing ourselves so that we'll be able to mobilize others. It's what you have you can give. They say there are many error in the pupils today. Why? Because our brothers, let me say our fathers, they don't want to learn. Not everyone, when I say they, I, I did not meet everyone. There are some of them that are very vibrant in the word of God. That is why the error that is there today, we should not be a part of that error. We will not say because everybody are doing it, it, it does not make it right. We, will, we can't follow multitude to have fire because the Bible makes us to understand, say we're in this world, but we are not of the world. Anything we are doing should be, I mean, should be different. Let people, people should be able to differentiate you from the people of the world. If you say you are Christian, there's no difference, there's no difference between you and non-believer. That means you're not a Christian. At least there should be a difference between you and all believer. Yes, we Christians who can grow anointed because we are human, but the Bible makes us understand that our anger should not be sunrise, should not sleep on our anger. We are bound to be angry. Please try to put it so that uh, it will not hinder our progress as an individual and as a leader. Um, they will, many people may come under us. It's what we have now that will be able to teach people. The atmosphere, as we know, is already, is already contaminated. The generation is already contaminated, but we are doing our best. It's not only me that will change Nigeria as a whole, but where I am now, I can change my friends. I can change those people who see me, my family, my friends, my workers, those people that are close to me. Anywhere you are, you can do the same thing. If, I mean, how many of us here are 14? If you can do your part a little, I can do my part a little, it will make a difference. We won't say maybe one million people are doing it, it does not make it right. We won't say because they are doing it, we want to do it. No, we should try because Jesus Christ bought us back, he's bought his children back with precious blood. That blood is very, I mean, it's very, I, I don't know the adjective to qualify it. It's very important, nobody, 
Even nobody, if we say, come, be, uh, let's kill you for your uh, for your child, you say, no, 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 let that let the boy or the guest suffer for his sin. I did not commit it. But Jesus Christ came to die for our sin just because of that love. We are Christ like, we should show it. We should know that these people were taking the curve. We are not to take care of their spiritual life alone. They are physical, they are soul, they are psychological. It's very, it's very, it's very necessary. You see, nowadays people commit suicide because people are not there for them. If people are there for them, they don't see somebody to share their bodies with. You see some people now, even in the pulpit, once you talk to them, what you discuss with, with them will be the order of the day. They will even say to the extent you know you yourself that, that confide in them, you know that they, they, you are the one they are talking to. Please, that is why we are teaching this uh, topic. We should not make such error. We should not make such mistake. Anywhere we see mistakes like that, we should try to correct it. But the Bible makes us understand, say we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. Let your mouth, let your anything you are doing, let your thoughts, let your smile, anything you have, use it to, let, use it to, I mean, to increase people's life, not to break them down. Just try to bring people up. You see, bring people up. You see some people, now when they see that somebody is, is going up, is climbing, they want to bring the person down. They don't want that person to shine, no. Pastoral care and leadership, we should not be a part of that. Anything we are doing, we should encourage one another. He said, most three, three seconds, two work together, save the aggregation. That agreement, we should help one another, no matter the, the difficulties. I said that here, yeah, consistent pastoral care as a minister is very important because we are not to take care of the body alone, we are to take care of the soul spirit of man. And, uh, and we say charity begins at home. We should try to start it. That is what I'm saying. Start it in that your small place, in that your small course you are doing, in that your small children you are teaching, in that place you are leading them, in that place that you are a choir mistress. Try to start that good behavior. Let people see you and say, ah, this sister for some time I've been watching this sister now. He's changed though. He used to grow annoyed quickly before he don't grow annoyed though. He used to insult people before he don't used to insult too. People want to know why, what is the secret? Ah, he's not studying with the pastoral care and leader. She said, ah, I want to be a part of it. Something that changed this person now, I want to be a part of it. There's a story I will quickly that just came to me now. That I have to call the person today. Somebody told me that somebody did. I'm going to say this thing because we are leaders, we are ministers. We should mind what we do to people. We don't feel that we are there. Nobody can do anything to us. Just because a man of God, they gave the uh, somebody wanted to do marriage, just a traditional marriage. The wife, uh, they called her to come uh, dress something, and this guy, she says she's a stylist. She she says she does the woman hair, the children hair free every week. Once they call her, she will leave her work. But it that came to her turn to do marriage. She, the woman of God said she's going, she's going to take 1,600 euro to decorate the, the, the hall. She said, please, I don't have such money. You know, we are managing. No, things are very expensive. Do you know an outsider? Will I say that it's not a believer? Did the same work even better for 600 euro? And that sister has stopped coming to the church. Because of that, they went to bring somebody outside. Even the husband and the wife did not attend the, the marriage. I mean, what are we talking of? Where is that love what we are saying? Agape love. If even this person offend you, keep it aside. You understand? That is why we are teaching this thing now. Huh? It may be your turn tomorrow. We'll give this story so that when it comes to our son, we'll not, we'll not make the same mistake. Maybe they that made the mistake that they did not know that is wrong. I pray the Holy Spirit should reveal to them what they have done wrong so that they can make restitution. People leaving you, leaving the house of God because of you. It's if any, we cause this little one to sin. I pray the cause, it may not be our portion in Jesus' name. People leave you, you say, I let them go, that people will come. No, things are not. That person may go, you will not even be a Christian again. God is going to ask you, the leader, how did you take off the sheep? You are the shepherd, how did you take off the sheep? It is very important. May God give us the grace to be able to be the hearer and the doer of his word in Jesus' name. And I said, as a Christian game, important, we need to develop our skill. 
I saw this music again. I will refer to this music again. Um, I mean, when I heard the music again, I was smiling to myself. I said, thank God for Evangelist Fortress and the children. I saw the children. They have ski. Although she was singing, singing at a choir in Nigeria before she came, but when she came, she developed her ski. She did not just allow it to die, die. I'm, I've left Nigeria, I've left my country, I don't understand the language, but she's, I mean, that's key. You see, what she's doing has made way for her. She can even eat from that now. Please, we should not drop our ski just because, say, God, God did not ask us. But if God, God can reveal to you personally that leave this thing for my, for my sake, you can leave it. But if God did not reveal, Try to use your ski. If God reveal that don't don't work, does not mean that the ski your ski should die with you. Impart it to others. I thank God for Pastor Jude. When I'm teaching this, I, I heard it first from Pastor Jude. Pastoral care. I don't know there is anything like that, because Pastor Jude say if you want to learn, try to impart what you know, what you have learned to others. Thank God I'm here now. Our ministers, all of them, they will be coming. Are others to teach what they are, what they, what they have learned. Please, if you cannot do where you cannot go, uh, Pastor J, uh, Pastor Jude may not be opportune to be in Germany now, but I can spread it in Germany. What he taught me. Thank God for internet. That's how we say we should use our ski. Let's develop things. I was even looking at uh, internet just. I don't know who sent it to me. Drug that they just discovered in, uh, in Japan, it was high, high uh, 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 these herbal drugs, that they, they got it from flower, ordinary flower, the plants. If you trace it now, it's not a Christian, but we are there. But this thing can make their generation from generation to be rich. They will be rich and they will use the money. It's, it's, it's somebody that have that will give to the kingdom of God. If you don't have it, don't, you cannot give. They will even use it to bless people from generation to generation. We should try us as a believer. We should not hide our ski. The more you use our ski, the more it will, de it will be developed. May God help us. And an exa another example I want to give, I said we should try to work with our hands. We should not depend. We should not constrain people that they must give to us. No. If God called you as a minister, as a pastor, he said nobody that will leave his father, her father, mother, or leave his own personality for my sake that by no mistake. If God called you, he will make a way for you, he will provide for you. If God can provide for the bed in the air, he can provide for you. Don't constrain people. Don't use logic. Don't use trick. Don't use prophecy to get money from people. It will come. It will cease one day. But the truth of God will never cease. The word of God will never cease. May God help us in Jesus' name. Why I went to this, I said, Paul, when he went, he traveled, he made things, he saw people doing things. He did not hide the skin. He did not hide the talent. He joined them to make for himself. He would have been able to say, I formed this church. You should be paying me more. Let me be eating. No, he labored for himself. We should not hide our skin. We should try to use our ski anywhere we are. And I wrote here, there is a uh, skill a pastor must develop. Ability to preach and prepare someone like what we, we, we said yesterday, you should be able to preach, uh, preach. You should be able to deliver Simon. Don't confuse people. Say it in the, in the language they will understand. And uh, they may invite you as a pastoral care uh, student, say, ah, please, oh, mama, oh, we are going to this place, so oh, we will be praying for me. We'll be there. Thank God everything is left now watching you. What are the things you have to do when people invite you? Maybe you have not been invited now. They may have, they may invite you in future. That's why we are teaching this thing. First of all, try, prepare yourself. Once you prepare yourself, the Holy Ghost will help you. Knowledge in preparation. He said, uh, like what I read yesterday, 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, says, study to make yourself approved. Study to make yourself equipped. A worker that is not ashamed, rightly. That means the word of God can be delivered, can be delivered wrongly. If you don't know the right one, you won't know the, the wrong one. But when you know the right one, you know the Bible. When wolves, because the Bible makes us to understand, said there are wolves in sheep clothes, even in the house of God. Jesus said uh, the uh, judgment is going to start from the people. They said they know why they said it. Even in this house of God, there are people that want to deceive. But your own, try to study this word of God that will help you. 
the word of God is Jesus Christ himself. Once you have this word, nobody, temptation will come. You say, God behind me. This will come. You say, God behind me. May God help us in Jesus' name. And Lord, let the preparation, you must prepare. You must prepare. When they say you want to give me, say, don't just feel, ah, Holy Spirit, I, I, I leave everything for you. Prepare. It's what you have that Holy Spirit will work on. I say, and when you are called to preach or to give sermon or to give speech, you must know your audience. Who am I talking to? Today, now I knew that I was coming to teach a diploma a student. If I'm coming for bachelor's, it's another thing I will prepare. If I'm coming for master's, if I happen to be coming for master's, it's another thing I will prepare. Since I knew I'm coming for diploma now, I know what to prepare for the diploma. That is how you must know who you are coming to. Ask people, don't be shy, please. Uh, what, where, where you are inviting me? What are they doing? Is it children's day? Is it youth day? Try to know so that you know how to frame your word so that you will not get there that day. You prepare for children, you will be seeing adults more than 70 years, you'll be confused. And he says, speak as an oracle, as a Christian, as a child of God, you must speak without boldness. God has given us the boldness. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but of sad mind. We should be bold anywhere we are. What where anywhere we are, speak in that boldness of, of God. Say be clear and descriptive. When you are teaching people, try to be clear. Don't confuse people the more. Try to be clear. And when you want to use description, try to describe it the way they will understand. Like we, I said yesterday, even Jesus Christ, those days, because they were farmers, they were cattle He was always using the parable of farmer, the parable of sower, the parable of sheep, because that was what they were doing then. Okay, I say be conscious of your time. Thank God we, come. we came a little bit earlier than yesterday. Conscious of your time is very important. When did they give your time? Yes, don't close your eye. People will be, 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 be bringing paper to you. Say, yes, 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 I'll soon be finishing. I'll soon be finishing. When you say you are finishing, that means you are taking another 30 minutes. They say he has come again. No, you, I mean, you bore people up. If you happen that it happened that uh, there are some certain issues, there are some certain circumstances beyond your control, let people know. Tell them. They will know if they know you respect them, they will not be bothered. You can even take one that one more. But if you don't feel there's nobody there, they will understand. They will not understand. You see them, they'll start uh, looking at their clothes. Some will be going outside. You understand? We should try to make use of our time. If you are giving 30 minutes, try to work within that 30 minutes. And if you are going to have work more, let people know. You are going to use more time, let people know. And if Holy Spirit is putting something in your mind, let people know. Don't say they will understand. No. God may reveal to you. Holy Spirit may reveal to you alone. Tell people, look at all oh, due to this, due to that, I will be taking more of your time. It will help the situation better. And be um, logistic and systematic in presentation. When you are presenting, let people understand. If you are doing the introduction, let them know. If you are going to conclude, let them know. Now, when you start, you are concluding, you go back to your I mean, people will be confused. And after this preparation, you say, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit will help you to sterilize, to communicate it to people, to convince um, the people. The second, um, the second point is ability to administrate, like what we said yesterday. Uh, we read Titus 1 verse 5. Paul said he left Timothy in, in, in current so that he can put things in order. He can put things in order. That means he knew that there was disorderliness there. That is why he took somebody that he has trained. He said, I'm leaving you here to put things in order. God is leaving us on this earth to put things in order. That is why we must know the right thing we are uh, supposed to do. Because he said, if the, you don't know the purpose of things, the, uh, I mean, uh, abuse it is inevitable. If you don't know what you are supposed to do, you can abuse uh, the opportunity, you can abuse anything. Anywhere you go as a Christian, try to make order. May you uh, make things in order. I mean, a room is not built a day. You cannot just do everything a day. Maybe gradually, gradually, gradually. Maybe when you come to the house of God, the toilets are dirty. You know, if toilets are dirty, it can give people infection, this, this, that. You try to start from there. Please, let's take five minutes to wash this toilet. Those are the other linens. Before, maybe not this one will be singing chorus, this one because let everything be done because 
we are serving God of orderliness. I wrote a definition, like I said yesterday. I said administration is the art of setting things in order. We should try to set things in order. Our pastors, leaders, mothers, fathers, we should try to set things in order because we are the light of the world. Our God is a God of orderliness. And for us to be able to set things in order, we must. I mean, orderliness will be the key of the day. And I wrote here, chromo for order. I write here, what's O, the order, the spelling of order. I say O stands for organization, R stands for response, D stands for development, E stands for engagement, Y R O stands for resourcefulness. If you have this thing, organization first, what am I going to do? I want to put things in order. Organization, I have to organize this, I have to organize this. Respond, how people are going to respond? How am I going to respond to these things I have, I have planned to do? Development. And once you start doing it, increase it every day. Like maybe you don't use you are you don't use to read before. You want to put yourself in order how you arrange your house. The time you read, you understand. You can start planning it. It does not mean that I want to start reading Bible. I have to read the full from Genesis to Revelation one day to work. At the, it will come to a time that you will be tired. If it is only one verse, Jesus wept. You are able to read. You are able to memorize. Say, Holy Spirit, help me tomorrow. You'll be able to do more than that. Engagement. Try when you are putting things in order. Try to engage yourself, try to engage people. You can't do it alone. Anything, uh, try to engage, uh, try to engage people in anything you are doing. Don't say, I, I want to do it alone. You know, effective leader at his absence. If you are there, they are doing it. That means it does not make you effective. It's when you leave, people are able to do what you teach them. Is that that make you effective? Try to en engage people, engage yourself, engage people. And I wrote here, so I said, the good things about order is that it creates a system of operation. Once you, you put things in order, it will create a system for you. And this system, I said, like I said, S, save, it will save you from unnecessary embarrassment. When, you are, when things are put in order, it will help you to create a system. And this system will save you from many things. I say, S, yes, that star system will save you from necessary embarrassment. It will save you, you of your time. It will save you of your stress. It will save you of energy going up and down. Like for example, now we know that when we come to the church, people will be tasty of water. We'll try to put water in a reachable place where we can go, the ushers, where we cannot disturb. Uh, sorry, I'm always using ushers. <laughs> Uh, well, we will not disturb people. Not that when preaching is going on, is that time you want to go and give the, the pastor something. You'll be, I mean, you know, it's now, and now there's this life. Before you know it, they put everything in life. You may be ministry, people will be putting this life. You may not even know. They say, we church are they doing work, uh, work, uh, work our past now? We should try to save you of your stress. For example, we save you your time. Of that time of going back and going on, you have kept it in one place. When it's time to go and serve daddy, you just pass quickly and go and give it without people noticing. If we save you of uh, money, like for example, now we have, uh, what will I say? There's an anniversary in the church, there's children. Let me say there's quite an anniversary or any other anniversary in the church. At least if you have a good system, you make sure before that Sunday, everything is set in order. The map we are going to use, is he, uh, are we going to use battery? You put things in order. Not that when we come on Sunday morning, I'm taking the example, maybe with Mike. Now we say, hello, hello, hello. The mic is not talking. You say, sister, sister, please, please run to the nearest market. It, I mean, it's, it's, it now becomes stressful. It's now become, you are using more energy. It will even waste you money. The things you maybe you are supposed, if you prepare, you are supposed to buy for five euros, you will not buy it for 15 euros because it's now urgent. And they will be stressed. And uh, I want to quickly say now that um, as, uh, as um, a pastoral care student, maybe you are invited, even in our, this, uh, in our day to day meeting, you know you will not be available. Please inform. You can write a note or you can write to the platform. Please, I will not be available. Not that one will come, they will come and say, hey, Sister Faith, Sister Faith. I'm using myself now. You can know there's another faith, but I'm using my faith. Sister Faith, Pastor Faith, Pastor Faith. Somebody say, hey, Pastor Faith is at work. He will not take it. I mean, the audience will be waiting. We should try to, to set things in order. 
and there should be a system is you know that you cannot do it, which it can happen to anybody. Like somebody wrote that I brought a fall sick, nobody knew, and he's healing in Jesus' name, but try to inform. Thank you, sister, for that uh, information you gave before time. I said to create order is a key you must learn, especially when you are coming from a disorderly environment. I would say, let me use my Nigeria as example. Lagos, we are always in haste because we are used to the system. Even when we, we, the time we came to abroad, Lily, they will be asking us, are you poor rainbows? Are you poor not tired? Because we are using to this gaga, 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 ga, you understand. But if you know you are coming from an environment like that as a Christian, you must set things in order. You must calm down. Because like that uh, behavior, if you bring it to maybe a place like Germany, nobody will welcome it because they are not used to, they plan their things beforehand. You understand? <laughs> like our own, now we can just be passing. Sister, will you, we have a program in the church today, will you come? But you can't do that abroad because you did not inform that person. You will be ringing, will not open for you because there is a system in everything we are doing, especially we that is coming from uh, a disorganized environment, we should try as much as possible. Not that we can do it all one day, we should try gradually, gradually, gradually. He said we should not disperse little beginning. You do small today, do small tomorrow. When time comes, it will not be a part of you. So many Christians came out of a dysfunction family setting. And so it become imperative for to learn how to coordinate the house of God, which is the pillar and ground of truth. You see some people now, because of the way, the way they were brought up, the society they were brought up, they are disorganized. You even see them, even in the house of God, you see that, dis that dysfunction in them. It's not their fault because it is where they are, they are coming from. I know it is, uh, it is not a, is not a sickness, but gradually as a Christian, because, because that is the component of the, maybe that is what we have been made of since they gave birth to us, we are used to that line, but gradually, 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 because the house of God is a house of peace, it's a house of, of faith, it's a house of truth. Anything that is not in order, or anything that you know that is not good, try to uh, put it out. Say, so please note that administration should not take the place of Holy Spirit. This is very important in pastoral care and leadership. Yes, we, we know we are teaching now that everything should be done in orderliness and we should create a system. It does not mean that we don't believe in Holy Spirit. Pastoral care and leadership are first priority to be a student or to be a student, let me per say per se, is you must be born again. We believe in Holy Spirit. It is just a system that are put in place to ensure orderliness as a believer. We must not give room, we must give room to Holy Spirit to adjust our event and system, which is very important. We are talking of orderliness now, we are talking of system, not that uh, because um, we have closed, uh, we have placed order that uh, we are going to be, uh, maybe something prayer meeting is going to be for 30 minutes. Holy Spirit can speak to anybody that we should do extra prayer. No, 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 we say no. We believe in the Holy Spirit, but if it happen, we does not happen all, uh, all the time. Try to inform, try to inform people. I know this prayer meeting was supposed to close by three o'clock, but I'm going to take extra five minutes because we have to do. The Holy Spirit have revealed to me that we have to do this, we have to do that because as pastoral care student, we believe in the Holy Spirit. As a student of pastoral care, we must run. We must not run into the problem of organizing the Holy Spirit out of the church. Yes, it is not part of all. That is not what we are told, and that is not what they taught us. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Not that no, we have system in this church. Whether your Holy Spirit is revealed to you, put uh, keep it to your side. No, we are not a part of it. We believe in the Holy Spirit as pastoral care student and our orderliness, our system should not uh, uh, should not exclude the Holy Spirit. Anything we are doing, we should allow the Holy Spirit to intercede. It can interfere, can intercede, can do anything on behalf of us. We must allow the leading of the Spirit as he guides 
our mind and always be ready to allow him to interrupt and intercede our program. As I've earlier said, we believe in the Holy Spirit as we are going on now. As I'm teaching now, somebody may raise up his hand, look at what the Holy Spirit put in my mind, say we should do this, we should do this. We hold on because we respect the Holy Spirit. Are we going to do it now, brother, or after the church? He can, after the teaching, he can say immediately, we'll stop this teaching and do it because we must allow the Holy Spirit to take the lead. Well, I believe I will believe in the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is put, putting something in your mind, be kind enough to let others know it. As I've earlier said, Holy Spirit can put something in your mind. Let me know as I'm teaching now. Holy Spirit can put something in your mind. If you cannot speak to interrupt, you can just write or write to the, to the ministers. Like, look at what the Holy Spirit is putting into my mind. Two, major area you need to give attention to. It is very important in church setting. The area you must give attention to programs and events. Like this example I gave before that is happening now, they have to come in as, as one of the counselor. Uh, is this thing program and events? Program and event, it can gather church, it can separate church. We should be very, we should be very careful when we are doing program and events and resources. I know when I say resources now, well, first thing is money, but we have other resources which we will, will be will be here in this evening. As a program stroke event, as a minister in ministry, we are to have organized events with a clear focus. For example, don't call people together for prayer meeting, and and you end up engaging in the Bible study or priest service. Yes, events and program, please. Pastoral care students we are very should be very mindful of this. If you are calling people for prayer meeting, let it be prayer meeting. You can, I mean, you can give one worship song. Or if it is Bible study, let it be Bible study. When you call people, they say one hour for Bible study, you use uh, 30 minutes for praise and worship. Uh, maybe you come and use 20 minutes to speak in tongues. 10 minutes for Bible study. That is what not what you call them for. If you call them for uh, Bible study, yes, it's one hour. You can use five minutes or 15 minutes to pray. You can make an announcement. Please be strict to what you call people for. Not that you are calling people for prayer meeting, you end up uh, in Bible study or exhortation. But if the Holy Spirit inter in interrupts, which you often don't do, be, res be responsible, sensible enough to inform your audience about it. Please, as we have said, you know, I've I've emphasized on this part things. We the Holy Spirit can interfere in whatever you are doing. Maybe we are to come to Bible study now. The Holy Spirit is sees the intent of the heart. It may see that somebody is sick or there's somebody we have to intercede for immediately, a pregnant woman. The Holy Spirit can put it in your mind that, hey. Uh, we are going to do, yes, he can put it. Please let people know. Respect your audience. Yes, so today is supposed to be Bible study on Thursday, but Holy Spirit is putting it in my mind that we should intercede for these people, we should do for these people. People will even do it well. They will do They will do it more because you involve them. You made them to know what is happening. Not that when they, when they, you call them for Bible study, you are now, you stand up, you are now interceding for Sister Faith. You say intercede for this, intercede for this. They will be confused. Is it Bible study or intercession day? Please, we should try to carry our people along, respect people. So people are asked to lead prayer for five minutes. They end up leading worship song, which it should not, it should not be a part of us in pastoral care. When you are lead, stand conscious. You know, we said it before, it's coming again, which is, it makes it more important. I'm laying more emphasis on it. Five minutes, you are called sister, pray for five minutes. Not that you use five minutes to speak in tongues. For yeah, tongues is very good. Yes, you can speak in tongues. Not that you use five minutes, another five minutes. I mean, please keep to time. Everything has a season, has a time and season. When you call people for five minutes, they call you for five minutes, try to use five minutes. If you are using extra, which it can happen, please let people know. As a pastor or leader, you have to be concerned about the order of service and time frame for the event and not bore people. Yes, you have to be as a pastor, leader, group leader, praise leader, ushers, 
you have to be concerned about people, your audience that are sitting, don't board them up. Don't say uh, 15 minutes, you end up uh, two hours. Next time they won't come. You call them, they will say, uh, I don't have time. I don't have, because I know some people now, they say, we know when we enter the church, we don't know when we'll come back, which is not supposed to be in the house of God. I mean, there is time, let that time, stick to that time. There are some occasion that you can see the time, it's normal. Not every day you say 1.30, you close four o'clock, you go home six o'clock, no, please. Don't bore people up. Some preacher have become hindrance to the gospel by not organizing their message, yes. Don't be hindrance to the gospel. Don't be hindrance to the word of God because they, they, they don't organize when he's supposed to preach, he will be doing announcement. When he's supposed to do announcement, he will be doing preaching because it busts people up. People will be, I mean, they will be tired. They will no longer be interested. Next week, you say, mm, I can't come because if I go there, I'm going to sleep late. The third point is ability to care for the flocks. It is very important as a leader, ability to care for the flocks. It is very, very important. Not scary for the flocks now. We are talking of ability to administrate. And we are now talking of ability to care for the flocks. You should be able to care for the flocks. The Holy Spirit puts you in charge. God has put you in charge. Uh, as a shepherd, as a leader, you should be able to care for them. For their private life, you should be able to care for them. If somebody is there that maybe is going through one thing or the other, he has confided in you, please. Let that, let, let, don't let that person go and hear it from the third person. It has killed many people. It has spoiled many things. Let secret be secret. If he wants you, before maybe you see, this person that came to you, you cannot handle the situation. Maybe somebody came to me now. I can Pastor Jude came to me. I'll say, ah, Pastor Judo, in this aspect, oh, I'm not very good. Oh. Please, I will can I say to Pastor Della, if you say yes, I'll go. Not that when he just leave, I'll just drop from Pastor Della. I know I don't know this. He come and you start narrating. If that person happened to know, he will not be happy. We should try, if somebody confide in us, we should try to keep it secret. Pastoral care, there are different resources given to a Christian leaders in the ministry, such as human resources. When we talk of resources, I said before, what we should take note of in the church program and event and resources. Now, there are different types of resources. I know when we say resources, what comes to our mind first is money. Time is money. Here we have a human talent, human through talent, spiritual resources. We have capital resources, we have time resources, we have emotional resources, human resources is very important. Talent of people, it's not money, money, money. People, there are, there are some people that are so passionate about the things of God. Not because they come to church, they don't have all free, you, you will direct them. Or because they are doing something, they don't have money to, to I mean, to contribute, you will them. But there are some other parts that they are good. They may be, they may not have money to give, but their time, they give their time. They are always there to sweep. They are always there to close, uh, to lock the church. They are always there to, I mean, to take care of the instruments, appreciate them. Not that because they don't have money, you just try to bring them down. No, 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 it's not you. Uh, talent, when you see people with talent, try to bring them up. The Bible said we should lift others higher than ourselves. Try to bring them up. Don't see because you, you see that they have their they have the talent. You are trying to cover it. You are trying to cover it. No, build them up, bring them up as you are lifting them up. God will lift you up also. Spiritual resources and the talent which will engage, engage, engage our people to use their talents in the house of God. They should not bury their talent. The more you use it, the more it will increase. Encourage people in the house of God, where you are working, anywhere you are in your family, you can see your children, you can see some tiny to them, encourage them to use it and encourage them. Spiritual resources, yes, spiritual resources. Some people now, they may not have a, a, a physical one, they have spiritual resources, that means spiritual gift. Try to, when you see any gifted people, try to encourage them, try to develop the gift and you try to use your spiritual gift well to the glory of God. Our spiritual gift is not for sale. Jesus gave it freely. You should give it freely. 
when you help people, you 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 want to help somebody to fast. Maybe a brother or a sister is going through one or, or two problems like that. And sister, if you cannot fast, I will fast for you. Give me money. No, it is not done. The gift that God gave to you, try to give it uh, freely the way we are giving. And human resources too. Uh, any advice, advice can come from unbelievers. If that advice that comes, that come, try to wait with the scripture. If it is what we have, put it to practice. It does not mean that because this person is not a believer, it does not have idea. No, he has idea. Like we'll take example from Moses. The father in Jethro was not a Christian. But the advice he gave to Moses helped the Moses to be able to lead the children of Israel successfully. He said, if you do this thing alone, you die young. So choose others. Let them be on top. As they have things, they have anything that is difficult for them, let them bring it to you. You understand? If anybody give us exam, um, advice, look at it, pray about it. God, look at this person, the advice this person uh, that he gave to me. If it's according to the will of God, God says you should go on, take it from that person. I will have capital resources. Capital resources. Under capital resources, now we can bring money. Like this example I just gave today now. Money. Money is the root of evil. Money can build, money can destroy. Just because of money, because you are thinking of your selfish gain. You don't even remember what this sister has been doing for you. This sister has been there using her time. She will leave her work where yeah, she's working. She'll come and do your hair, do your uh, your children's hair. But it's not for you to help her. And you said, no, you are not giving her price. We, uh, we leaders, we should not just have from that habit that our, those serving us, they must be the one taking care of us. No, sometimes you still can't take care of them. Sometimes you still dash them something. I mean, the gift, the essence should not just be from uh, down to up, down to up. You sometimes still bless them with anything you have. It is very important. Time uh, resources is very important. I've said people, there are people that are using their time for the glory of God, for the things of God. Don't overlook them. Don't underrate them because maybe they will not have physical cash to give to you. The time they are using, it is very important emotional resources and we should try as a leader to take care of emotion of people i said pastoral care leader shepherd will take care of uh, soul body and spirit emotional uh, resources is very important there are some people maybe what you do to them it they may i mean they may be broken emotionally Maybe physically you may not see it, or they may be broken uh, 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 emotionally, or maybe you are not the cost. You should be able to, I mean, you should be able to see through people. That is the gift God has given to you as a shepherd. If we don't have, we should develop it. Look at people. Is this person happy? Even with this, somebody you are talking to every time, if that person is sad, when he call, you will know. Sometimes you say, oh, what is happening? You say not to you. You will just be laughing because you knew that some, something is wrong. Please, we should not try to do with the capital design. We should try to emotion of people. Psychologically, we should try to help them. Because if they cannot confide in us, they'll go and confide in people outside. That will say, we'll say, parents, be very close to your children. Let them open up to you. Because if you don't teach them to some people, but somebody will go and teach them in the wrong way outside. Thank God for the for for for, I mean, for the Europeans. They don't know whether you are the child is six years. They will tell you, say this thing, you are going to meet it in future. I'm telling you that I'm warning you against it. But we Africans will try to keep it. We say we don't then want them to square. If you don't teach them, <laughs> internet of today, the children, they don't not think they don't wash. Maybe you control them outside, you don't give them phone, but they will go and see their friends' phone, they will go and peep and be seeing it. We should try to take care of them, both in your house, in our family. We should try to take care of them. We should try to encourage them emotional. We should try to, I mean, look through them, see what they are going through psychologically, advise them. You may not even have money. You may not be the rich one. Your only advice alone, your only prayer alone, your only, I mean, counseling alone will help a lot. Your ability to manage these resources to a large extent determines how far you will grow in ministry and life. These resources we are saying now, your ability to manage all of them will depend on how your church will grow. 
how your family will grow. Because even husband and wife, we were not born the same day. We are not born by the same parents. This one has his own character. I have my own character. That is how everybody is. The, the house of God is not, it's not, it's not, I mean, it's not made for sense. Bad people come, come from outside and become sense. You understand? Don't just uh, think that uh, um, everybody is the same. No. You should be able to manage. I mean, there are many characters. I know our leaders, our elders, they are trying, our pastors, they are trying. Because you see people, you even say, God, is it mother that gave birth to this one? The way they will be behaving. But you should have, you should pray for God to give you the grace to be able to manage them. Managing human resources to a large extent determines how you manage other resources. You say how you manage this um, human resources determines how you manage other resources. How can you manage people? These human resources is people that God has made you overseer, that he has made you a leader. He has made you a group leader on poor. How can you manage them? It may be there are some that has a, a different, um, that their character may not be the way we are brought up, but you have to manage it. No matter the situation, no matter the condition, you have to manage it. Thank you very much. I uh, will have to stop here now before we have to come back again. Thank you for listening to me. We can start if there's a, any question. I think we'll have five minutes of break. We still have two minutes. Please, moderator, you can take over. Ma, thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. We really appreciate you. Welcome. Please, if we have any questions, we can ask. Before we go to steal the money, he did not want them, I mean, that honor to be given to Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ saw him. Even when they asked Jesus Christ, they said, Oh, he's going to betray you. He said, One among you will betray me. He spoke to them in parable. He still showed Judah love to the last day. He said, One of you, the person that did the same time with me. Even when Jesus, uh, when Judah came that day, he betrayed Jesus Christ with a kiss to show because of the love Jesus Christ uh, was showing to them. It means that Jesus Christ was always kissing them. That was why he was always said, the one I will kiss, you will know that that one will be Jesus Christ. We should take example from Jesus Christ. Agape love, unconditional love. Whether the character is correct or it's not correct, you are there to help the person. We should not always look at the negative side of people. At least we should be able to see some good side. Every negative person has a good side. Just look at, neglect that negative side and look at that, uh, at that good side. Show that person. That person may be somebody there antagonizing you, does not want you to grow. He said you should leave your fight for God. Do your own part. God will systemize that person. Show him love. He said if you show him love, he said, I'll pray for that person that is against you. He said, that prayer will be like as if God is, uh, is putting fire on that person's head. You know, so when somebody will put fire on somebody's head, how the hair will be burning. That is the example Jesus Christ gave to us. but we should do our own part. Leave the rest for him. The vengeance is for him. Judah was there. Jesus Christ did not kill him. If it nowadays, eh? Before time, he will not even, he, they will first of all, I don't know what they would have done to him. But just because of that compassion, just because of that love Jesus Christ have, agape love, he left him. Jesus had persons like Peter who was always talking about without thinking. Peter was extrovert, he was sanguine, he was a talkative. Before you know it, he will say something. Before you know it, he will say something, but Jesus Christ was there. He was able to manage him. He, the end, when he left them, was able to manage him, did not condemn him, did not say, you talk too much, you don't allow me, I'm the leader, you don't allow me to talk, or you are always antagonizing me. Jesus Christ supported him because of that agape love. We will see Thomas, who was a, a doubting follower, yet was youthful looking for how to get food in the wilderness. We see the doubting Thomas, he never believed. You have, you know how frustrating it is when you have a follower that does not believe in your vision. 
you will say it's A, he will say it's B. You will say you are just saying this, I don't believe. Jesus Christ was able to bear with him. Even Thomas, he said, no, 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 me, I won't believe. If all of people believe, I will not believe. But he was still useful. Jesus Christ did not condemn him. He did not drive him. He was still useful. Even the way they were looking food for, for people in the wilderness, he helped in looking for food for them. We should know that everyone is useful in ministry. It only depends on your ability to manage them. No one is not useful. Your ability to marry them is very important. Who are we going to talk of? Is it James and John? They call them son of thunder. Those ones, they are always hot temper, big, 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 big. But Jesus Christ was able to manage them. They had that hot temper. He was able to calm them down. Even when they say, ah, Jesus Christ, this one, they don't believe you caught thunder to come and to swallow them. He said, no. He said, you don't know the manner of spirit you have. He said, I did not come to destroy. I come to save life. We lead that shepherd, we, are come, we don't come to destroy because we are Christ like we come to save life, to add this to people's life. How to care for the flocks, feeding the flocks, you must feed them physically, spiritually, financially, otherwise, emotionally, try to feed them because Jesus Christ has given you, given them to you. That is going to ask you. Say, so this one I give to you. Ah, what did you do to them? Those ones that went astray themselves, he knew. Those ones you drove away with your character is going to ask you. Say, so look at this person, he came. I called him to myself, but due to your character, due to your arrogancy, you drove him away. We should try to be very careful. Taking oversight, try to look at them. Oversight, try to be all in all. Like woman, woman is the daughter of the house, is the cook, is the cleaner, is everything. That is why as a leader, we should be everything in any way we find ourselves, especially in the house of God. We should be the one that, uh, that nobody say, if you talk to her, no, you see Pepe, no. You say that leader, nobody, they will talk to her, she will not even mind you. You should be that kind of person, oversee all the activities in the church. There are some leaders under you. If you are a pastor, oversee them. You are a choir, you are a choir mistress. Try to see those people under you. Try to ask for them. Not uh, where are you? We have choir practice today. No. From Monday to Friday, don't call them. On Saturday or Sunday, you start calling them. No, try to oversee them. Try to look at, are yeah, they happy? What they are going through? There's extent that you show love that they will open up to you. Look at what I'm going through. Look at what I'm going through. As a leader, we should to be able to oversee everything. Please, let's read the first Peter 5, verse 2 and 3. Yeah, I will be concluding with that. First Peter, first Peter 5. First Peter 5, verse 3. I read. Verse 2, sister. Verse 2 and 3, sister. God bless you. Yeah. Keep the flock of God, which is among you, taking mm -hmm. the oversight thereof, not by consistent, by willing, but sorry, mm -hmm. not by constraint, but willingly, mm -hmm. not for filthy lucre, but of the ready mind, mm -hmm. neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being ensamples of the flock. Amen. Okay, man. It's a feed the flaws of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint. Don't force people to do things. On the name, you are their leader, you are their elder. Don't force them to do things. You can encourage them. You can start doing the things yourself. They see that you are made the passion, the zeal you are showing. They can follow you. Don't force them. Don't say the authority bestowed on me, you must do this thing. No. You are not his God. You are only a shepherd. But Jesus Christ is coming to ask you, how did you take off the sheep that I kept under you? But being example to the flocks, be a good example to them. Don't be among those people that will say, uh, do what I say, don't do what I do. Let people see you. Let people see Christ in you. Let people take good example from you. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown. The chief shepherd. 
when he will come, when Jesus Christ will come, he will pay you according to your handwork. He said he will give you a gold that will not that will not fade. Paul said he press, he press because of that crown that is awaiting him. And that said crown, if we do it according to the will of God, that crown is awaiting us. This I would just like to read uh, uh, verse five to it. Say likewise, you, you no, verse four, verse four. Okay, say, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. That crown is awaiting you. Don't allow maybe people, to, the things people are doing to scare you away for you to forfeit that crown. That crown is personal. God is going to judge us one after the other that day. We should try to become the overseer. Know that somebody put you there. You are not their Lord. You did not die for them. Jesus Christ died for them. He has the final say. He just kept you there as a caretaker. When the time comes, he was going to ask you, how did you take care of them? We should have that behind our mind. In conclusion, as a minister, you must realize that your Simon preparation and presentation is important. Preparing Simon, preaching, giving the word of God is very important, but your administrative skills are vital. Your administration, the way you organize things, it is very important. But your personal care for others will have the longest impact in your ministry. The way you take care of people, the way you take care of them will have long impact for them. Peter drew the sword. Why? He wanted to slaughter the wife because of the love that Jesus Christ showed, because of the compassion Jesus Christ had on them. He said, this man can never die. He can never die, will do anything. Because of that love, please, we should try to show our people love, no matter what, no matter their character, no matter their behavior. There are some sober ones who pray for the Holy Spirit to be able to give us the grace to govern them. May God bless us all in Jesus' name. I will be ending here, waiting if there's any question or contribution. God bless you.